Welcome back to the energy conversion lectures. In this lecture, we will derive and explain the torque expression of the rotational movement single excited system such as the shown. This system consists of fixed part called stator and rotating part called rotor. Both the stator and rotor are made of magnetic materials. Also, the system has one excitation coil called stator coil or stator winding. The angle theta represents the angle between the rotor and stator magnetic field axis. Since we already developed the force and mechanical power of the linear motion system, the torque expression and the mechanical power of the rotational movement single excited system can be developed by using the analogy with the linear motion system by replacing the linear movement displacement or position x by the angular rotation angle theta. Also, replacing the linear motion force Fm by the rotational torque Tm as follows. As you can see, the torque expression is equal to 1 over 2 I square d L of theta over d theta. The mechanical power is equal to the torque times the angular velocity d theta over dt. Now let's focus on the torque expression. This torque expression shows that if the magnetic system is excited by the current I, the torque can be developed only if the inductance changes or varies with respect to the rotor angle theta. That means if the inductance varies with respect to the rotor angle theta, the rate change of inductance with respect to rotor angle theta dL of theta over d theta will be non-zero value, and therefore the torque will be non-zero value as well. So to use this torque expression, we need to always remember the following two points. In linear magnetic system, the inductance depends on the geometry of the magnetic circuit only. In other words, if the magnetic material saturation is ignored, the inductance depends on the geometry only. The inductance is represented by L of theta to show that the rotor angle theta is the only factor that can change the geometry and therefore the inductance of the magnetic circuit. The second point is single excited rotational motion system able to develop torque only if the inductance changes with respect to rotor angle theta. In other words, if the inductance changes with respect to the rotor angle theta, then the system able to develop torque because the derivative of the inductance dL of theta over d theta will be non-zero value. To give more details about these two points, let's assume that the rotor is located at the following two positions. The first position is the vertical rotor position where the angle theta between the rotor and the stator axis is equal to zero. The second position is the horizontal rotor position where the angle theta between the rotor and stator axis is equal to 90 degree. As you can see, the magnetic field path will flow through different geometry or different air gaps in the two cases. The vertical rotor position has a small air gap length L1 and the horizontal rotor position has large air gap length L2. Therefore, these two cases will have two different reluctances and therefore two different inductances. Now, if we ignore the magnetic material by assuming the permeability of the magnetic material is equal to infinity, the reluctance and the inductance of these two cases can be calculated as follows. Note that the fringing effect is ignored as well. That is why the effective cross-sectional area A of the two cases are same. Now based on these inductances, 
or reluctances, the vertical rotor position will have the maximum inductance and the horizontal position will have the minimum inductance. It is very clear now that the value of inductance depends on the geometry only. Now, for the same excitation current IS, the vertical rotor position will have high magnetic field level because the inductance value is high, while the horizontal rotor position will have low magnetic field level because the inductance value is low. So now we know that this system able to develop torque because the inductance changes with respect to the rotor angle theta. At this point we are not expecting for such system continuous rotation. However, this single excited system will generate some movement and then stop. Note that the inductance in single excited system represents the self inductance because we have only one coil. In other words, there is no mutual inductance because we have only one coil. Also, we know from previous lectures that the self inductance consists of two inductances, the leakage inductance and the magnetizing inductance. The leakage inductance is ignored at this point. Basically, the self-inductance is equal to the magnetizing inductance only for now. It is worth to mention here that the torque generated because of the self-inductance variation is called reluctance torque. Obviously, this torque is depending on the variation of the self-inductance with respect to rotor position. This type of torque establishes the foundation of the reluctance machine which considered recently one of the important electrical machine in industry. We will cover this type of machine in the future lectures. Since the inductance variation is very important in developing the torque, therefore let's show how this self-inductance changes with respect to rotor position. As mentioned before, the angle theta represents the angle between the rotor and stator magnetic field axis. Now if we assume that the rotor is at the vertical position, the angle theta is equal to zero. At this position, the air gap seen by the magnetic field path is minimum, the reluctance is minimum, and therefore the inductance is maximum and can be donated by L max. Let's map this maximum inductance value at uh, this inductance versus angle plot as shown. Now, if we rotate the rotor clockwise to the horizontal position, the angle between the two axes is 90 degree. At uh, this position, the air gap seen by the magnetic field path is maximum, the reluctance is maximum, and therefore the inductance is minimum and can be donated by L minimum. Let's map this minimum inductance value at the plot as shown. Now if we rotate the rotor clockwise at 180 degree, the inductance will be maximum as shown. Also, if we rotate the rotor 270 degree, the inductance will be minimum. The inductance at 360 degree is maximum. Basically, if we measure the inductance in a small angle steps, then we can notice that the inductance changes as sinusoidal variation with respect to rotor position theta. Note that the inductance changes around some average value. Also, we can notice that the inductance changes two cycles per full rotor angle theta of 360 degree. This self-inductance relationship can be represented mathematically as L of theta equal L1 plus L2 cosine 2 theta where L1 and L2 are constants. L1 represents the average of the sinusoidal signal and L2 represents the peak of the sinusoidal signal. To find the constants L1 and L2, we need to develop two equations at two different angles as follows. By solving these two equations, L1 will equal to L max plus L minimum over 2 and L2 
will equal to L max minus L minimum over 2. Therefore, the inductance variation with respect to rotor position can be represented as shown. Now, since we already identified the self-inductance L of theta, the developed torque can be calculated as follows. The question now, how to identify the direction of the developed torque when the system is excited? In other words, in which direction or position the torque will move the rotor? To vertical position or horizontal position? Since the current is squared in the torque expression, then the torque direction is independent of the current direction. In other words, the torque direction is independent whether the current I is positive or negative or in this direction or this direction. Therefore, the torque direction is dependent on the rate change of inductance dL of theta over d theta only. It is very clear from this general torque equation that the torque acts or increases in the direction where the inductance increases with respect to rotor angle theta. Therefore, in such system, the rotor will rotate to the vertical position when it is excited. Because at this position, the air gap and reluctance seen by the magnetic path is less comparing to the horizontal position. Basically, when the coil is excited, the rotor will try to align itself with the minimum reluctance position. Note that the rotor will stay at the vertical position during the excitation and we do not expect continuous rotation when the system has only one excitation coil. The other way to identify or understand the torque direction and inductance relationship is by plotting the inductance and the torque expressions that we developed earlier and investigate the torque direction depending on the increase of inductance direction. For example, if we align the rotor at 80 degree position and then excite the stator coil, the direction of the torque will be negative and in anti-clockwise direction because the inductance increases in this direction. Note that the rotor will eventually stop at zero degree where the inductance is maximum. Now, if we locate the rotor at 100 degree position, the direction of the torque will be positive and in clockwise direction because the inductance increases in this direction. The rotor will eventually stop at 180 degree position where the inductance is maximum. Let's conclude this lecture at this point and we'll continue in the next lecture. Let me know if you have any question. Also, make sure to subscribe to this channel so you do not miss any lecture. Thanks for listening. I am Ihsan al-Nabi and it was a pleasure sharing this lecture with you. Thank you.